We are putting things in place. And soon we'll have a ministry under the name Word and Spirit Assembly in Barakpo. Well, I thought everybody would have been excited for that boy. All right? So I am also looking at going back in the Piparo area. And I am looking for a place. Hello? Oh, all right? Forget the hair dropping out and forget my age, as you will see. All right? This is what I feel in my spirit at this time. I felt that pull. I felt that tug. And I know it is this time to go back into that area and to venture out into the Barakpo area. We were once in the Barakpo area, and there was a word released to me to go back into the Barakpo area. I said, what are you going back there to do? But God, word is God's word. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I am. So, tell me something. Would the character called Satan sit down and allow that to happen? No. No, no, no. But I want to encourage us this morning. We say, all right, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 And I want to encourage you as much as possible. My brother, I will send you the link. On Wednesdays, this study is marvelous. Everybody so far is speaking about the the teacher, preacher, pastor, and the word as well. We are talking about the spirit, the soul, and the body. And we ought to be functioning from the spirit man and how we need to function. So I encourage you on Wednesday, if you don't have the link and we missed you by chance, just let us know and we will send you the link. It's a great study. It's going to get better. I am telling you, it's going to get better because I know what the study is all about. I have a good enough idea of what the study is all about. All right? So I know if you are into spiritual warfare as we're talking about, and from the moment we start going down this road, you realize the enemy will not sit down. The moment you decide to go further, you begin to, to pray, you begin to fast, the enemy is not going to sit by and allow that to happen. But there are more for us uh, than against us. Amen. There are many more. There are legions of angels at our access. And I encourage us this morning to utilize the services of the angels that God has given unto us. The writer to the Hebrews say, we have angels. They are ministering spirits uh, to those that are heirs of salvation. And you and I, we are heir. We are an heir to salvation. We are an heir of salvation, so the angels are there to minister to us. Amen. 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 I want to continue this morning. But before I do, I was asking the Lord, you know, God talks to us, eh? whether you uh, want to believe that or not, he speaks to us. And this is something we'll hear in the study as well, and how we can recognize the voice of God. What is happening with Word and Spirit Assembly? And there is the Spirit of God just draw my attention to this. And Pastor Shirley is a witness to this. And somebody else I spoke to about this. All right. That the Spirit of the Lord said you're not having corporate prayer. Look, my brother here. We shall have prayer. That's why we were seeing so many things being done. But then again, everybody, it's not only us being affected or we, this is happening with us. All over you talk to pastors and ministries. COVID come with a different spirit and it left a different spirit. But we as believers who know our Lord and know our God, the book of Daniel says we are going to be strong and we are going to do great exploits. So I'll say, Lord, what do I do here? I do not want to stop the study and come back in church. We may not have the attendance. We have people on the Zoom. We know we have right, um, that are following the study with us. So every first Tuesday in the month, we are having, we started having an in-house prayer meeting. And this is what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. 
Here we, what we're going to do from next month. Every first and third Tuesday in the month, we are going to meet here for prayer. But it's not just prayer. The meetings are going to take a different turn. We are going to be praying. It's going to be prayer and deliverance. Hello? We are not going to just pray and go home. We are going to pray corporately, individually. We are going to pray for people. And that's another blow. If the devil thinks he's going to win this battle or win this war, he's going to lose again in Jesus' name. All right? I, am, I made up my mind. If it's me, myself, and I, or if it's myself, Pastor Shirley, and Brother Mickey, we are going to be here. But I know Brother Bini likes to pray as well, and he will be here. So I know for a fact that we definitely will have four people here, and we will continue to pray. I just want to encourage you. This is where our strength lies. This is where the fire that we're talking about, this is where. We cannot just stay back and allow this enemy to just sweep over. Yes, everybody. The drama is out. The worship leader is out. There are other people in the ministry that is out because a virus is passing by. And while everybody wants to protect the other, the enemy is sitting back, but he's not going to win. I'm declaring that. Jesus is the winner man. We used to sing that. And Colossians, Paul says, Jesus defeated him. He made a public show of him. And I want to encourage us, getting on the Bible study, we are going to see for ourselves how much strength, who we have residing on the inside of us, and what we can do with that. All right? So, I want to talk this morning on the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And whoever is on the Zoom, whoever is on YouTube, all right? So, as just as a means of a, a simple introduction, and I want to talk uh, in a format of teaching, preaching, the parting words of loved ones, when they leave this life, are often remembered, and I would remember it. Every one of us. I remember my father. He passed away the Monday. I remember the Sunday he came from church. I didn't have no road and nothing like this yet. My father walked through all day, come through the lagoon areas, they would say through the grass, and came and sat down. He asked Pastor Shirley for sweet. He wanted cake and whatnot. And I don't know if she remembered, but I clearly remember distinctly, he called her three times while walking down the step. That was the last I saw my father alive. The Monday morning on the job around 11, my last sister, I got a call saying, come home now, pa dead, I quote and unquote. So the parting words, the parting words of loved ones are worth remembering. It worth remembering. There is no difference with the words of Jesus. When Jesus, the departure of Jesus Christ, it's no different. Jesus already told the disciples that he was soon to depart. He had given them the Great Commission. And I began looking at this Great Commission. We don't hear about this Great Commission anymore. Now we're hearing, bring your money, bring your money, bring your money. That's what we're hearing. We're not hearing, go tell somebody about Jesus. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Go tell somebody about Jesus. All right, I make no apologies when I stand here. I do not make apologies for, for what I deliver up here. The Great Commission, Jesus said to those disciples, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, all, all, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the command of Jesus. And the command is still given to you and to me in the now, Right now, because you and I are disciples of Jesus Christ. So this command is still for us. We need to go, therefore, and teach nations. We engage people in different conversations. We engage some of us. We engage people in some dirty jokes as believers. Some foul conversations. 
unclean conversations we carry on and we don't tell them about Jesus Christ. We don't. All right? Now, we, Paul tells us in Ephesians, foolish jesting, idle words, we will have to answer. We will. All right? The church, we, I can talk about the church because I am part of the church. And I can speak of the church. All right? We have lost the vision. We have eyes and we're not seeing what God has left the message. The, you know, the work that he left us here to do. Why? Like somebody said, the, the minister was praying. And thank God in COVID, we are still here. Why are we here? Because the most I have purpose for us. And I will keep saying that there is purpose. Every person has a job to do. And if we don't do the job, if you are in a company and you don't pull your weight, what happens with the company? The company don't make the profit that it's supposed to make. All right? Then the burden falls on the rest of the staff to pull the slack where I sat down and decided to do nothing. And the mission, the commission is every person, we used to say each one bring one. Nowadays, we come to church and we stop inviting people. We are all dressed up and we pass with the vehicle, we splash the water on them and we never stop to tell them, do you know Jesus? Come on. Come on. Acts 16, the jailer was told, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will be saved and his entire household. So it's not just me in my household that will be saved. It's not just you in your household. God promised to save the entire household. Then in Luke 24 and 49, Jesus made a promise. The promise is the same Holy Spirit we are talking about. He told them, don't depart. Don't go out to teach. Don't go out to baptize no one until you be endued with power. And I want us this morning, regardless of who on the Zoom, who on the YouTube, who in the building, who wherever they are, we need the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We need the baptism in the Holy Spirit to do the work of the ministry. Without this baptism, we will not have the power to do the work. And that's where we are failing because you're not hearing messages on this anymore. We're not hearing messages on witnessing. We're not hearing messages on soul winning. We don't like to hear these messages. We want to hear what sounds good to our ear and what pleases the heart. But this is the word that needs to be delivered in the now because Jesus Christ is coming back for a prepared people. And hear me this morning, we're not prepared. People can say what they want, wherever this word goes. We are not prepared. If Jesus should come, all of us should be ready to go with him. And after we go with him, there's the beam of judgment when each one of us will stand before the same Jesus to be rewarded. And the reward will be what we have done for Jesus Christ. And I keep saying this. All of us may not be apostles and bishops and preachers and, and teachers and, and so on. Michelle, but each one of us can be soul winners. And I am encouraging us this morning. I am beseeching us this morning. Start winning souls for the kingdom. Start winning souls. The word says, he that winneth souls is wise. Let us start doing what needs to be done. There are people who have no hope on the outside. And they're looking for a hope. The hope is in Jesus Christ. The hope is in Jesus. People of God, people, wherever you are, the hope. Hope is only found in Jesus. It's not found in a religion. It's not found in an organization. It's not found in a group. It's not found in a man or a woman. Hope is found in Jesus Christ 
and Jesus Christ alone. Could you put up uh, Mark 16, 15 to 18? I want to look at this. I want us to see this this morning. Mark 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. And he said unto them, again, we're hearing it. Matthew, Mark is saying the same thing. Luke said the same thing. John said the same thing. Go into part of the world. Watch the word. Go into Kumar Avenue. Go into Rosha Douglas. Go into Ivy Branch Road alone. Go into Piparo alone. Go into Bonaventure alone or table. No. The word is go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's why I want to go back in Piparo. I am looking for a place to go back into Piparo. Maybe you cannot help me, but you can pray for me or pray for us to find that place because this is the time to go back to that place. Hear what he says in verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Watch the next. But he that believeth not shall be damned. I am not telling nobody that. That's what Jesus said. That's the word of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the word of Yeshua Hamashiach. He said, who believe and is baptized, such a person is going to be saved. If the person does not believe, that person is damned. If you go back to John, John will tell you the same thing. God so loved the world. But then the next one will tell you, God did not come, Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus Christ will be saved. So the people that don't want to accept Jesus, you have damned yourself. We damn nobody. By your refusal of Jesus Christ, making him Lord of your life, you have damned yourself. Now that thought now struck me, what about those of us who have been baptized and was following him and we just decide to get, get coal or run coal or sit on ice? What will be our portion? Because we have tasted of the Lord and we know that God is good. Listen, everybody, I cannot answer for you and you cannot answer for me. Each one of us will have to answer for ourselves. Believe you me this morning. Believe you me. If you look at what is happening, even in the churches, in the assemblies, you're seeing signs because the Lord said, what the word says, coming on to these times, the love of many is going to wax cold. People will find all type of excuses, all different reasons not to serve Jesus, not to look on to Jesus, but to just let life run as it's running. Let it go just at the unsaved man. But this is not going to work in the kingdom of the Most High. Listen, every person that is saved, you are saved for a purpose. And it's time that people in word and spirit assembly especially find the purpose of your salvation. Find out what God saved you to do. Find out what God called it to do. And then we went on. And these signs shall follow them that believe. If I believe, if you believe, and we believe, he says, in my name, in Jesus' name, not word and spirit assembly name, not no other brand name. We are getting carried away with the brand name. The brand name will take you to heaven, beloved. The brand name, the organizational name and structure will take none of us to heaven. It is Jesus is the ticket and Jesus is the only ticket. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He never said word and spirit assembly is the way, is the truth or is the life. He said, Jesus said, he is the way, he is the truth and he is life. While we gather here to worship him, while we gather here to pray to him, while we gather here to fellowship one with the other, Jesus Christ is the way. 
I remember a well-known preacher, a televangelist, he was asked by a prominent TV personality if Jesus is the only way, and he said no. But I am here, I'm going to cross that, my belief. If I am wrong, correct me. The Jesus that we talk about, that was born in a manger, when he grew up as a man, and before he went to the cross, he said, I am the way. When Thomas asked, how are we going to know the way? He said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am life. Jesus is life. You want life? Jesus is life. You want the way? Jesus is the way. You want truth? Jesus is the truth. In my name, that name Jesus. The truth of the matter, there was a contention that, no, that name Jesus never existed. That's the English. All right? Yeshua Hamashiach was a name, Yeshua. The angel said, you shall call his name Yeshua. Yeshua. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. In my name. In my name. We are talking about the purpose. The church needs this baptism. You and I need this baptism. If we, those of us that are baptized, it's like the tank in the car, the gas tank, or it's like the, the diesel tank in the vehicles. We need to go by the station and keep filling up because we are going to run out. When we exercise what God has given us, the gas runs out. We need to go back to the station and pull the gas in to go again. So each one of us that have already been filled, we need a refilling. There's a continuous and a constant refilling, and that's an everyday thing. Every day. I cannot see, I will align prayer like drinking water. We need water. We could do without food. We can, but we cannot do without water. And we cannot, as believers, I'm here to say to you and to me, to remind myself and remind you all that prayer is important. And as I come to that, hear this one. Alicia was on our family. We have a family prayer meeting every Friday night. A group prayer meeting. All right? Pastor Shirley and Brother Mickey was on it. And I'm sad, my brother. He said, Pastor Mike, I'm telling you what he said. The people in the church where you are don't pray. Look, she's there. Look, the sister there. And I said, Lord, thank you. We need to pray. So it already confirmed what the Spirit of the Lord said to me before. And I, yes, I'm implementing that this morning. Every first Tuesday and every third Tuesday, we are going to meet here for prayer and for deliverance. And I'm looking at this Tuesday night meeting to grow into a deliverance service. Because this is where people need to be delivered. The house is a house of deliverance. It makes a sense like preachers have come here and say, we come, we hear the word, we clap, we sing, and we go home. And that said, no, we need to start exercising. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Amen. I'm saying where we went wrong, Lord, because in the early days, my seven brother Bini and a few of us, we went and there was, we had a name. We go places and demons know who we are right here. Remember the sister out the road. She bring her daughter and she said, she know Jesus. The demon was saying, he know Jesus. He had been flying in the air with Jesus. He's in the What's heaven with Jesus? Uh, then the demon said, I am 4,000 years old. I come from India. Right here. It has to happen again and it has to be bigger. Right? God spared my life for purpose. I should have been out a long time ago. And different ones here will see that. And I start looking at what happened. Situations come and befall me. Situations come and fall before my brother. And the zeal and the fire and the enthusiasm and the enemy knows exactly where to hit you. My sister Nazman keeps telling me, she said, your son is a weakness and the enemy is going to hit you where it 
hurts most. So it's going to be painful. Wherever is your weakness this morning, the enemy is going to attack that at the most. He's going to hammer that. He's going to hammer that. He's going to hammer that like the blacksmith and the piece of iron in the fire. He's going to hammer and hammer. But all is so, I would have changed this message. I would have stayed there. I would not have been able to sing. I would not have been able to worship. I would not have been able to minister this word. But God is God and every man else is a liar. Amen. 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 So this is one time the enemy didn't get me where he wanted me. Amen. Amen. Well, look, my brother here. I pick him up, Princess Town. You would want to know the last 24 hours of my life what it was like. Just off the record, if I got two hours sleep, I got plenty. Right? So if you think you are having a hard time and you are struggling, other people have it harder. If the enemy could wipe me out, you would be stranded. Not that nobody else wouldn't do the job. Not that God will have somebody else. But God has placed me here for such a time like this. And I keep saying, God has placed you here to work with me for such a time like this. I never know I would have met Minister Terry. I never know I would have met his aunt. But we went on Zoom and a link went to someone. And from that link went to someone. And here we are. God had a plan. I didn't know this, brother. We were connected. When we start the ministry, somebody tell me, talk to Brother BD. He would come and help you. I, he was going elsewhere. So God have knitted each of us one to the other for purpose. Divine purpose. Divine purpose. Believe you me, divine purpose. Every person helps this ministry in one way or the other. Your presence alone is strength for us to go on. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Alex W. Ness, he wrote a two volume on the Holy Spirit. Right? He says this. The purpose of Pentecost is to receive power. Listen, the bottom line, you and I have salvation. We are born again. But there's another level to go, beloved. Brethren, there is another level. We need this baptism to do worship. We, listen, you'll see from the word, we need the baptism to give our tithes. We need the baptism to give our offering. We need the baptism to clean the church. We need the baptism to come to church. We need the baptism to pray. We need the baptism to preach. We need the baptism to witness. Whatever we are doing in the kingdom, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We need, we need, we need. That's why the enemy is circling around our homes and in our homes because we don't have a generator with power to back up the enemy. We need this power. We need this power. We need this power. When you speak in tongue and you're praying in tongue, we pray in a language that the devil himself could never understand. We pray to the most high in a language that God alone knows and he answers. We need, we need, we need the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need this power, beloved. We need this power to come to church because without this fire in us, we won't want to come to church. Like somebody said, I was listening to this particular preacher and he said, when we talk about carnal, carnal is the flesh and he's so right. So if I am moving in the flesh, when I feel to come to church, I come. If I get up Sunday, I'm not hitting nobody. If I get up Sunday morning and I don't feel to go to church, I have feel to see them this morning, so I ain't going. But the word of God says in Hebrews, forsake not the assembling of ourselves. If we read the word, we will follow the commands in the word. But when we're not reading the word and we're not praying, we are like the chaff, the psalmist say, with the wind drive it away. 
So anyway, any direction the wind blow, we gone. The word, the preacher come and ask, do you read your Bible? No. Do you read your Bible? No. Do you read? I sit up there and say, wow, no wonder why. And our name is Word and Spirit. We are functioning. When I was asked, what name do you want to give the ministry? I said, well, Bishop, I said, listen, I believe in the Word and I believe in the Spirit. And he said, he has called me Mike. He said, Mike, he said, you know what? This is the name I'm going to give you. Word and Spirit Assembly. Our sign, Word and Spirit Ministries. He said, Mike, you know why I put in ministries? I said, no, Bishop. He said, because in the event, when the time comes, and you have other branches, and I never thought uh, that there was going to be other branches of Word and Spirit Assembly. God, the Most High, He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We sing a song, Our God reigns, and we live like our God dead. You don't have to say amen to that. The purpose of this baptism is for all. Alex Ness said all, not some. All the necessary wisdom and guidance and pray and ministry to the gift of the supernatural signs. And hear what? To tear down the kingdom of Satan and build the kingdom of God. We are on the home stretch. This is the time to build God's kingdom. This is a time for people to get into the kingdom. But what I'm seeing is people are slipping outside the kingdom. And I'm here to declare to us that there is a lake of fire that we did almost a whole year of studies in the book of Revelation that speaks of hell will be emptied in the lake of fire. So I'm here to tell you, if you don't believe in a hell, it will be emptied in the lake of fire, which burn it forever and ever. I'm not here to scare anybody, but that's the reality. That's the word. All liars, all adulterators, all idolaters, all murderers will be in the lake of fire. Let me say something else to you. Everybody here know what sin is. Right? When we know if we do that, we break his commandments, that is sin. So we won't do that. But what about when we're not doing what we're supposed to do? Is that not sin? Answer me this morning. When we know what we should do, are we not doing it? Does that not amount to sin? Think about it. We're not going in the bar. We're not going in the hotel or the motel. We're not jumping up in carnival. That's of the devil. But we're not supporting the ministry. We're not coming to the house of the Lord. We're not reading the word. We're not praying. We don't want to fast because some of us can't do without a meal. Listen to me. I stand here this morning and I don't really, I'm not concerned about what anybody else have to see. You see, because if I don't do what I'm doing, when I stand before him, I'll be preaching a water-down gospel, a water-wash gospel. If you want to hear love stories and nice things, you are free to go elsewhere. That's your choice. In John 20, 22, Jesus breathed on the disciples and he said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed, he breathed, he breathed, life, breath. The Holy Spirit in you and I is life. Life, life. I remember telling one pastor, you see the enemy know where my weakness is and he know how to hit me. And right here I told that pastor, I said, I don't know what happened to me, I lost it. I started to get weak. I start to lose my focus, right? The enemy just wants you to focus on the problem. 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 
and we lost with joy. Whereas the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when we lost our joy, we become weak. We become weak. I'm here. The blood of Yeshua Hamashiach is against every unclean spirit. The angels of the Most High. I call for legions of angels. Even though one angel in the Bible slew 185,000 men, I'm calling legions of angels. In the early, my brother said, he said, Michael, God to place an angel, a mighty angel over this place. I want that angel to come back and take up his position. In the early, we asked for angel in the four corners of this ministry. One apostle came and said, I see the angel sleeping. You need to do something. I am determined to do something. Who want to serve the Lord? Come serve the Lord with me. If you don't want to serve the Lord, there's nothing I can do. There is nothing God can do. There is nothing Yeshua Hamashiach can do. There is nothing the Holy Spirit can do. There is nothing legions of angels can do. Because God, in his wisdom, gave you and I a will. And he will never override the will. I love him. When I think about that, and then again I come back to the Bible study. Will, emotions, the mind, all in the soul. The spirit man, nobody could see the spirit man. Nobody. But the spirit man, and he brought out something that I told him, I said, I said, bro, you brought out something that shake me. He said, when we accept Jesus, Jesus came into our lives and everything. We say, Lord Jesus, come in. And Jesus come with all the power, all the authority, everything Jesus came in on the inside. So inside of you and I that have been born again, we have everything that is necessary. Give it some thought. Give it some thought. Let me just move on with this. John 20, 22, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. They were saved. That's the born again experience. In Acts 1, 8, he said, listen, wait. Don't go out to do nothing yet. Wait for the power. So they were born again. Like you and I, we are born again. But we need the power. We need to sing. We need the power. We need this baptism to sing praises and to worship. I told him, we need the, I told Mickey, you need the baptism to beat the drums. You need, you know what, listen, the same two guitarists, father-in-law and son-in-law, when they began to play the bass with the rhythm guitar, there was something else that is to take place in this house. And we would sing, and we would praise the Lord, and we would magnify the Lord, and we would dance under the anointing in the house of the Lord, and I'm declaring it will come again. 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 It have to come again. It have to come again. The Greek word for power means dunamis. It means power. It means might. It means strength. It means force. Satan did not respect Jesus Christ while Jesus was on the earth. We go back to Matthew 4. The Bible says that the spirit, Jesus was led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And I began thinking, temptations are going to come my way, not because I go astray, but because I am led to face a challenge. To face a situation. And my reaction towards that situation or circumstance will determine like this here this morning. Will determine where I go from here. Situation will come to you. Depends on how you face it. Will determine where you go from there. And everything that comes to you and I. Then come to get us to go down. Or cause us to go down. It came to cause us to rise above. The temptations, the challenges, we wouldn't understand it, but it come to cause us to move forward. Always to move forward. Never to break us down. But we don't know who we are in Jesus. 
We go back. We have the power and the authority to command the devil to go, to command the demons to go. Permit me for referring to my brother. We were heading to Princeton and we just came back home for something and he called. He said, Mike, come. We come back home. He said, I have a situation, I need your help. When here was this person under the influence of an evil spirit. I thank God I have witnesses. And I just sat there and I was watching. And the person that was under the influence of this evil spirit was not watching me in my eye. As a matter of fact, I was facing the back. And here the demon. What are you watching me for? You feel you could do me anything? I said, no, I can't do you nothing. But Jesus Christ. Woo! Jesus of Nazareth. He said, in my name, in my name, we prayed for that person. And today that person is delivered and serving Jesus Christ. We went up Indian Trail when we went to pastor. The brother got married. And the night he got married, they pinned something in the jacket. And demons started to feed on him. I'm not telling you something that I hear. Or I read, I tell you something that I experience. I am not afraid of any devil. I'm not afraid. I thank God for the power of God, the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism, you could be praying in church and you will experience that. You will go home and you will lie down sleeping and the Spirit of God is going to come. Jesus is going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and give you the power that is necessary, that is needed in this hour to work the works of the Most High God. Let me run with this a little bit. In John 1 12, John right? he came unto his own. He came to the Jews really. You and I are Gentiles. We're not supposed to have salvation. That was God's plan. But God knew. He who is wise and he knows out. As many as receive him. Look the word power there again. But this word power there, and the word power in Acts 1.8 is two different meanings. This one is exousia, to become. He gave you the power to become a son of God. He gave you the power to become a daughter of God. That's what it means here. But in Acts 1.8, the power here is like dynamite. You look at a western, you look at a war movie, right? You see dynamite. They place the dynamite. When they light it, they run because it explodes. This baptism is explosive power. It's power to cause you and I to do what we are called to do in the kingdom without being weak, without being timid, without being fearful because it is the Holy Spirit in you and I that is doing the work. It's not the man or the woman. It is the Spirit of God through the individual playing the instrument. Had the drummer been available in here, we had songs, Warrior! Warrior! That was it. And I said, Brother B, I was saying, Brother B, give me the reggae beat. Nevertheless, it is what it is this morning. In Luke 10, 19, the disciples were given authority over the devil. Behold, I, Jesus, I can't give you nothing. I might be able to give you $100 right now. All right? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have to get back to that place. We have to get back to that place. In the early, the same Pastor Ryan came right here. And he said, 
Pastor Mike, he said, this ministry is a ministry of deliverance. And the time has come for this ministry to be the ministry of deliverance. Yeah. Amen. I'm speaking it into the air. I'm speaking it into existence. It must come to pass. One brother came from the stairs. He said, I saw somebody walking through the gate blind. And they walk on back seeing. It have to happen. It have to happen. Who want to fight? You fight. Who want to do whatever? You go right ahead. But this is the house of God. And it is a house of deliverance. Amen. 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 In Acts 2 and 4, they were given the power to do this. We are born again, yes. Like I said the last day, I know of pastors when they see demon possessed situations, they run. You handle that. But God called us to that. Yes. He gave us. We're not supposed to run away. We need to run into. You have no power over me. Yes. No tabij. Yes. I declare this morning, they do blood sacrifice. They sacrifice all to kill me. I'm still alive because Jesus, he is Lord. They took her clothes and they buried in the cemetery. Today we are still alive. They have tried many times to interfere with Mickey, to destroy Mickey. And Mickey is still alive and Mickey will live to do the will of God. I'm declaring the word and for the assembly. Every person that decides to take up the plow and to go forward, you will live to do the will of God. Amen. You will live. No matter what the enemy, what he shakes. I remember this morning after your prayer, I said, Lord, I was not so strong. I was living a kind of unbalanced life. And we went to this home, we in the church, and the woman was saying every night, the demons come and open a pan and throw in the dal and throw in the rice and, and throw in right in the area here. And simple pray. So, honestly, I myself didn't believe it when I work. I tell you the truth this morning. When I met her, I said, Sister, what's happening? She said, All the pans remain closed. No demon come back here. Simple, simple. We need the baptism. With the Holy Spirit. We need the baptism in the Spirit. That will cause people to come to church. You will want to pray. You will want to pass. You will want to see the glory of God in this house. We want to see the Shekinah glory of God in this house. And the time has come that His glory will be seen in this house. I'm speaking it in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach by the power of the same Holy Ghost. Let me just move a little. The baptism is for power to witness. I remember as a teenager, the guy has this bar and a mini grocery up the road there right now. All of us was, you know, youths, win ball cricket. One day I stood up a little higher up. And I started telling him about Jesus. And he asked a question. How come Mary as a virgin gave birth to Jesus? And she never knew a man. Up to this day, beloved, I don't know what I tell him. And I told him, I said, boy, he said he understand. Right? I said, I don't know what I tell you. He tell me I realize that. So then know when the Spirit of God is working through us. We don't have the wisdom to deal with the thing. We don't have what it takes to deal with it. We don't have the words. But the Spirit of God, God the Holy Spirit gives us. He comes in and he helps us. He is the biggest brother that you and I can have. He's the biggest helper that you and I can have. He helps us to pray. 
He helps us to understand the world. He helps us to live this life. He makes a way where there is no way. Power to witness. Peter and the others spent three and a half years, most scholars say, with Jesus in his ministry. They saw Jesus went to Lazarus too. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, get up, coming out with the grave clothes. One author say, one preacher say, we don't know if he know where he was going because he was bound, but he come walking out. Right? Jesus said, lose him and set him free. So many are individual in the church. We in the body. We wake up and we born again, but we still tie up. We eyes, we can't see. We ears, we can't hear. We mouth, we can't speak. We hands, we can't do nothing. We feet, we are going nowhere. But we in the church. So what needs to happen? You need to be set free. Amen. You need to be set free. Such people need to be set free. It's not a Sunday morning. We need to get away from the Sunday morning Christian thing. Christianity is every day. Not Sunday alone. It's every day we worship Jesus. It's every day we sing praises. It's every day we glorify and magnify Him. Not Sunday morning for two hours. And some folks, the two hours is too much too. You can stone me after. I don't really care. You can say, like some have said, who he think he is. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't matter. After Jesus rose from the dead, he went down by the sea. Peter with the little piece, half naked, three-quarter naked maybe. And know the fisherman language. When they recognized who was Jesus, he scampered for clothes to cover up his body first. Three and a half years with Jesus. And still did not believe that he was going to be raised from the dead. That he will die and he'll be resurrected. And he tell them. And many are individual. We are in the church and we don't believe that Jesus is resurrected and he's at the right hand with the Father. We don't believe it. So some of us, we go back to the culture and we have to dip in this and we have to dip in that. And I have to go and help my family. It's my family. When my family goes, say, where, where they gonna think? It's my friend. Where you gonna think? Well, you go right ahead. Right? That's why some of us will never be baptized with the Spirit of God because we dabble and we have a hand here and a hand there, one in the church, one in Jesus. It don't work. It can either be in Jesus. Yes, I will say, we will always make mistakes. We are not. <laughs> Perfect is one. We are not immortal yet. And as long as I hear a preacher, I brought him here. He said, there are so many things God straight up in my life. And this man have a ministry, right? And he tell me, say, pastor, there are still some things I have to work yet on. None of us. Not one of us. But we cannot remain where we are. Cannot. Cannot. The word witness means matter. Jesus was telling them, you need this baptism, right? In the event that it cost you your life, you will be ready, prepared for that. But what is happening now? You come to church and somebody tell you about your dress, you stay home. Somebody tell you about your haircut, you're coming back to church. Somebody tell you, well, dress properly. This is not just for church. You're vex. We vex. We vex, you know. No pastors can correct nobody. Because people real vex. Leave me, I'm my own man. You're not in politics. You're not in the government. You're in the church of Jesus Christ. And he have ordained leadership with responsibility. Amen. 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 But if you feel that's how you want to dress, or you don't want to dress at all. That's up to you. This way, we need the baptism. Because the Holy Spirit will tell you the dress you have on or the clothes you have on is not fit for my house. Yeah. 
not Michael. He will tell you, drinking the alcohol, that's not supposed to go in your body. You want to drink the alcohol, that's up to you. That's up to you. That's your choice. Because you're, we very well know we shouldn't be dabbling in this thing. I tell people, when I was outside here, I was outside here. When I'm inside here, I try my best to stay here. And the devil's purpose is to get me back outside here. His purpose and plan for you, Sister Polly, is to get you back there. He don't like where you are. He don't like you talking to that young lady there. He feel you must leave her alone. Let her go down the road of destruction. And I speak in that word. Not just some memory. And not because I want to speak. Because that's a word. You are a very important person in your household, sister. Take that. Take that word. Simple as you, you might say, not me. I am just, you know. But you. <laughs> in India, permit me. If you are a believer and there is a non-believer living, practicing the other religion in India, they will burn your house down. They will kill you. They're doing it all now. And now the Indian government bring out a law with the Terrorism Act. As you go to the authorities and report that you are terrorists, they come in one time and take you and you're finding you again. So a lot of Christians in India are suffering. They're burning the churches. One church they burn, the Bibles remain unburnt. I tell you what I saw with my eye unless somebody fake something and put it there. In Iran, the pastors who in Iran, they disappearing, the missionaries disappearing. What it is with this religious group of people don't like to hear the name Jesus. It's only the demons can't stand the name Jesus. So when a man tell you don't talk about Jesus, you should know why he's saying that. Right away. Right away. It's the power of darkness delivered from the power of darkness. We did all that here. Made copies of all these handouts and give people here. I don't know what we come up with. Young man. He's a believer. He's 16 years old. So he's still on the street and he's telling people about Jesus. But the witch and the wizard in the community didn't like that. The Satan worshiper didn't like that. So they decided to kill him. The bus he was riding in, the demon pulled the bus off the road. They can pull your car off the road. They can pull you off the road. Demons push me in front of moving vehicles. Demons draw, try to drown me. I'm telling you what I live, what I experience. You just feel somebody push you in front of the moving vehicle. They are real. The bus run up the road and crash into the market and a number of people died. So sometimes when the enemy coming for you, other people will suffer. Oh. Other people will suffer because he cannot get you. Other people will pay the price. They tried to kill him numerous times and they failed. Let me declare this to you. Jesus is your shield and your buckler. Jesus of Nazareth is your protector. Jesus of Nazareth is your fortress. I'm declaring to you in Jesus' name, no demon is going to get your life. Your life is hid with Christ in God. That's why I went to the garden and she heard me. I, I wasn't feeling well. And I said, listen, you're not going to get my life. You're not going to get my life. My life is hid in Christ in God. So you have to go in Christ in God. To get my life. We need to quote the word. But if you and I don't read the word. We wouldn't know the word. So we wouldn't be able to quote the word. This young woman. Probably she was 16 to 18 years. Because she accepted Jesus Christ. In the Hindu community. In India. 
They came together. My goodness. She's my daughter. She's my sister. She is my aunt. Or she's my niece. How can I throw kerosene on her and light her up? They gather together as a group and they throw the kerosene on a young woman and they light her up and burn her alive to death because she gave her life to Jesus Christ. In Trinidad, in the Caribbean, in the West, we're free to give your life to Jesus. And we're not taking advantage of it. We're making all kind of excuse. I have no shoes to come to church. I have no dress to come to church. Electricity gone. I can't iron my clothes. And we have come to church. Water gone. As we get a little headache, we are coming to church. The person to heal the headache is in the house. He's in the house. I was about to say, I don't know where I get all this strength from, but I know. What about like Afghanistan? What about China? In China, the Chinese who accept Jesus, you know, they have them in concentration camps. By the thousands. They have them separate from the other people. And here in Trinidad, we have it nice. We can lift our hands anywhere and bless the Lord. But some believers, next weekend, they're going to be lifting their hands and praising the next Lord. I'll tell you this morning, it has no ashes in the Bible to forgive sins and to wash away sins. It is the blood of Jesus. It's nothing but the blood. The songwriter say, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Absolutely nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let me just run with this a little bit. The baptism gives us the ability to speak with boldness. Could you put up Acts 10 to 39? I just want to look at one verse, um, that particular. Scripture in Acts 16 20, because they speak with boldness, a city was troubled. Acts 19 29, a city was in confusion. Acts 13 44, the whole city came to hear what the disciples or the apostles were saying. In Acts 8 8, there were signs and wonders that brought joy to Samaria. God, Abba Father, Yahweh anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. When God anoints you and I, it's not just the Holy Ghost. It comes with power. That anointing, that baptism comes with power. But what to do? We don't even want to come to church. We don't even want to read the Bible. We don't even want to pray, Right? Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. When I talk about oppression, I'll tell you this. People will differ. This is my belief. Your spirit have the spirit of God or spirit of Christ or the Holy Spirit in it. Our spirit. No demon could enter your born again spirit. None. The spirit in you cannot sin. Hear me again. The spirit in you cannot sin. If the spirit in you and I sin, then God sin. Because Jesus is on the inside. The spirit of God comes in our spirit and resides there. He stays there forever. That's when we're born again. But the soul, my mind, my will, my emotions... My conscience. That could sin. I could sin. I have the will. I could use my will to do the wrong thing. Not the spirit. Not the spirit. My flesh. I believe this is my belief. You quote me this is my belief. Wherever this word goes. A Christian can be possessed, but not in your spirit anymore. You can be possessed in your soul, 
and you can be oppressed in your body. Give it some thought. Dig up your word a little bit. If I open up my mind to powers of darkness, they have a tendency to come in. What do you think happened with Eve? She opened up her mind. She eyes, she used her soul, and she began to watch the fruit. She used her ear, and she began to listen to the devil. She used her hands, and she went and picked the fruit. She used her mouth, and she eat the fruit. And then she used her hand and gave to Adam. Her spirit didn't do nothing. It is her soul that sin. It is our soul. It's not the spirit. The spirit of God will and our, and I hope that comes out in the Bible study. The spirit in you and I cannot sin. Cannot. It's impossible. It's impossible. All right. We are witnesses. Peter was saying, we are witnesses of this. Let, let me run with this quickly. I'm coming on to the close up here. We have, look, look at this one. And I start looking at this and I look at my own self. The baptism in the spirit gives us the ability to endure suffering with gladness and joy. And that's something I have to keep working on. Suffering, not easy. Persecution, not easy. Sometimes I drive in and somebody give me a bad drive. She have to remind me, remember who you are. You don't know who know you. We have been through this country, different places. I don't know them, but they seem like somebody said, when you go up there, they see you. We did wedding in Aruka. We did wedding in Shagonas. People know me. I don't know these people. Somebody passed and popped me. I, who is that girl? I don't know. But people know who we are. You know the mouth as they get a bad drive. Oh, you drivers, I know what I talk about. Sorry, it only happens to me. And they normally say the passenger in the front seat does react more than the driver. Sometimes I just have to shake my head. And the enemy knows exactly. See, when you're fasting and praying and you're on the road, he knows to push them in front of your car. He knows to make them, you know, the in and out. So vex your spirit. And you say the wrong thing. And then we break the fast right there. Listen. I had just some. I'll be 68 this year. Bless you, Lord. Some of us 50, some of us 50 something. Some of us in our 40s. Some of us in our 30s. Some of us now going into teens. We are no match for the devil. He has billions of years experience with the human race. So he know when he shipped this so and he didn't get Michael to get vexed, he go turn it the other side. You see arguments? Arguments is a weapon that he uses. Simple things. It raises big heated arguments. Two men get shot for two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Let me move on. Let me just to serve tables. Act six three. You know to dish out food. You need baptism. Here is one. When people bring the hamper, right? You need the baptism to take the hamper and give it to the people or divide it. As if you don't have. The Spirit of God in you, in that sense of the word, you take the hamper and you put it in your cupboard. Just say, oh, amen. We need simple things. When you look, you know where you'll see believers and the attitudes and the behavior? Look at them at the, at the table. Look at Christians eating. Look at Christians. Uh, sister was telling me, it caused a big problem in our church. They pack food by the containers. And send to neighbors and friends and whatnot. And when somebody talk, they're ready to fight. Christian. And this particular Christian, I know who I'm talking about. They're on Facebook. And uh, when you see the posting, I just feel shame, boy, them in a real up there with God and I know where. And I say, wow, I had to climb here to reach a level. 
attitudes, simple things. Simple, simple. You see, money, money is another area. The enemy know. He knows. Right? So we need to stay in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship with one another. To love the people here. We are talking about outside yet. To love one another here. Especially when they pass and they mash your polished shoes. Or they touch your pretty shoes that you buy. Right? Or they pass with a dirty hand and touch your clothes and they messed up. It takes the spirit of God. It takes more than a natural man not to reel up or reel up. If they pass and the elbow hunch you, you know what I'm talking about? We know. We know. We know. All right? To fearlessly preach before the council, the ungodly, we need the baptism. To dispose of property, Ananias and Sapphira, and I was thinking about that again. The church is growing. So they decide nobody, Peter didn't tell them, sell the land, you know. Go back and read the word. They decide, okay, come here, come. Let us sell this piece of land and we'll give the money to Peter and them for the church to go on. They agreed to sell it. They sold the land. But like I said last week, if they was to get 500,000, they get 800,000. Wow, money. When they see the money, you know, when we see, oh, you know what I'm talking about. Don't pretend you are no. Right? No, we can't give the Peter all that. Peter go buy a Mercedes with the rest. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. They agree to keep back the 300,000. Nothing wrong in that. But they're going to Peter and the Spirit of God. Same baptism we talk about. Tell Peter, Peter, that is not all the money they sell the land for. So Peter said, Ananias, is that all the money? Yes, Peter. All Peter said to him, Ananias, why Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Ananias was a born again baptized with the Spirit of God in the church. And money caused him to allow Satan to fill his heart to lie to the Holy Spirit. Let me run with this quickly. To preach revival, we need the baptism, to shake off customs. You, you would hear people saying, right? Then church, I have to go I so and so, they haven't prayers. You could go. Those are things you will never hear me preaching here. Because I know the word says what it says. I know my rights according to the word. But some rights that I have, I would not practice it because it could cause you to slip. It could. It could. So to shake up the customs and the doctrines where we grew up and what we grew up in, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Look at Peter and this, to sleep in the jail. And I look at this word and I would have said, Lord, but you call me to preach this gospel. Why you let me go in the jail? Why you let me in the prison? And these fellas, they were placed in jail and they were singing praises. I look at myself, I want to be crying and ponging up my head on the wall so it might be burst and bleeding and saying, Lord, you let this happen. Why you let this happen? Your court, and we just do that. We do that. Why my son not to get sick, Lord? And you call me to be the pastor of this ministry? Why this have to happen? Why does have to happen? Why the other, why the car have to break down? Why the two car have to break down at the same time? You're with me, right? Didn't the Lord know that that was going to happen? And sometimes I think he sat by and he watched me like that to see how I will react. And he watches us to see our reaction when we are confronted with situations before us. 
Yeah, this one. And I love this one. I think Alex Ness, right? He, he had this in his book. It say it takes the baptism with the Holy Spirit to bring an angel on the scene. That was Peter was in jail. An angel come, the gate open. Walk into the prison, gate open. Reach by Peter, chains fall off. We are talking about Old Testament. We talk about New Testament. We came here, have prayer meeting, and that door opened, demon gone outside. In years gone by, I had a tree to tree. Take up my sister from my mother there and come along to the end by Trisha there around the corner and the back door opened and closed for itself. Demon come out. If we are the people that we need to be with the Spirit of God, not only living on the inside, but baptizing us with the power of Jesus, baptizing us in the Holy Spirit, demons cast the arrow. You go in your house, people testify that they clean and mop and they make up the bed and when they go back in the room, they see filth in the middle of the bed. Demons. You smell sulfur, demons. You smell in different type of mess, demons in the place. You place dark and they smell demons in the place. We have power and authority over that. I am saying this morning, let us begin to exercise this authority. Let me just wrap up this. I just go to, I just quote this text, talk about it a little bit, and we close it up here this morning. Before I close on that, demons are knowledgeable and they have feelings. Matthew 8, 9. Demons have emotions and they have desires. Acts 8, 7. Demons are intelligent and powerful. Acts 16, 6 and Matthew 5, 1 to 18. The objective of demons is to possess the humans. To possess. I remember telling my father, he said, boy, what's wrong with you? Well, now we just say daddy and mommy in them days is man, pa. I say, pa, I don't know why I am doing what I am doing. If you're doing something and you don't know why you're doing it, the possibility exists that there is a demon behind that. Lo and behold, the pastor wasn't such a powerful man, but he came home to pray. And while they were praying in the room for my mother, I felt there's something. I remember that feeling. And after that, I lost consciousness of everything. When I wake up, I see all my neighbors in the room. Then they start telling me, this demon living in you for how many years? When they ask the demon where he entered my body, by the bridge, that same bridge by the open Bible church. I'm not saying to you, I hope nobody here, I don't know why this came to me, if you were involved in your past, in any sacrifice, animal sacrifice, you need to cut that. You need to cut that. You need to tell those demons back off. Because that is going to bring sickness. That's going to bring big problems for you and your family. Because the other parents, my father, I can say this, and I say this without any reservation this morning. I see my time to cut the key in my father with a little punching and a little butter and a biscuit and a candle. Where are you going with that? He going in the cane field to light that and feed whatever so that no accident ever take place. Simple things like that. These things that have repercussions to the generations ahead of us. We do things and we say, we tell them in the church, who is he? He getting old now. He don't live his life. He can't tell me. No problem. That's why I don't tell nobody nothing like that. But I'll tell you this this morning. When you operate so, what you do, it may not affect you. It will not affect you. It will affect your children and your children, children, until the third and fourth generation. Read your Bible. Let's read our Bible. We do things because we feel we don't want nobody to tell us anything. We, don't, we want to live our own life and who is them and who is them. 
And that is what the church of Jesus Christ have become now. Nobody, no pastor, no bishop, no apostle could correct nobody because we want to be left alone to do our own thing. But we are sowing seeds of destruction in our own household. When we sow those seeds and they start to bear fruit, then what I do, I wonder what to do. I wonder what to do. Brethren, you have that choice to make. In Daniel chapter 10, and I'm closing with this this morning. The Bible says Daniel decided to pray for his people, the Jews, and ask God what's the next move in his plan. He wanted to know. The Bible tells us Daniel set himself to pray and seek God. The very first day that Daniel prayed, Abba Father sent an angel, an angel of God, you know, with the answer to Daniel. 21 days after, then the angel come with the answer to Daniel. So what happened in the 20 days? The angel that came, you are getting it this morning. We're not getting it. God. The all-powerful Yahweh, El Shaddai, Adonai, sent the angel. He said, listen, you go, and this is the answer. Give Daniel these words. This is my answer for Daniel. First thing, and he was coming. Read Daniel chapter 10 when they get some time. The prince of Persia, a demon, a high-ranking demon. A high rank, and let me use this term, fallen angel. Over every country, Satan have a principality. Over every community, every town, my belief is over every home, he have an, one assigned. So you want to infiltrate. This is my interpretation and understanding of this word. Persia is Iran, present day Iran. So that tells me there is a high-ranking satanic being from the kingdom of darkness over the country of Iran. Still there. This demon stopped this high-ranking, prevented the angel of God from bringing the answer to Daniel. Watch this one. Had Daniel got discouraged and stopped praying that war in the heavenlies with that prince of darkness, if I may use that term, and the angel of God would have continued without any intervention of Michael the archangel. You see, once we start to pray and we get the answer, like what's, what we see, and we just give up and fall in me going back, this one I come in and that one I come in and we give up and we just throw in the sponge. So the kingdom of darkness gained victory over us. But Daniel continued to pray. And while Daniel was praying, Almighty God decided, I have to send Michael the archangel to wrestle with this high-ranking satanic prince. So that the angel that has sent with the answer could go and deliver the answer to Daniel. If you are praying, if perchance you are praying for something, don't give up. We're praying for this ministry. A lot of people are praying for this ministry. And we may put it this way. Instead of with the natural eyes, we're seeing it getting better. It appears that it's getting worse. But I have news for all of us. It's getting better. It's not getting worse. God is working. We're not seeing what he's doing with the natural eyes, but he's working. He is working. And I know the moment we decide to go back in Piparo and we decide to go down Barakpo, he don't like that, but he can't stop. I don't think you hear me this morning. Satan cannot prevent the work of Almighty God from extending. Satan cannot prevent the kingdom of God from being extended. He cannot. Hear me. I just have to remind myself. 
Tell him, hello. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, I, Jesus Christ, will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And hence the reason why we are going to have the first and the third Tuesday in the month in-house prayer meeting to call on the most high God to build the church in these parts. So that the gates of hell shall not prevail. If we were like any other group, anything goes helter skelter, anybody live anyhow and go up and do worship and preach and whatnot, here would I be filled. Oh, you know that. But because one brother said, he said, from the time I start to come here, I start to see trouble. Well, you are free. You are free. Stand with me this one. Stand with me. I can't tell you what next week Sunday will be like. But I will encourage you to make some time and come to church. Come to church. You don't know what, you see, when we come to church, a simple word, right? Alexander could just shake my hand and his smile could encourage me. Crystal could just smile and that will make me forget something that was bothering me. Just a hug, just an embrace, just a handshake, just seeing somebody is more than enough of encouragement. I encourage you to come, to lift your hands, worship the Most High God. Lift your hands with me.